The paternity test says my husband is not the father and he thinks I cheated. But the truth is much worse. I cheated and had a hundred babies. I am a sperm donor. I am a sperm donor. I said what I said. <laughs> An egg donor? An egg donor. There we An go. Egg there donor. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm shooting kids do, 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 do. out there into the ether. She's she's like a like a baby like a hen with fertilized eggs. Mm-hmm. Just popping them out. Dropping them. Like Farmer John. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it happened. And I haven't been able to stop crying all day. I never cheated. I love my husband. We've been together since college and he's the love of my life. He's handsome and kind. And while I've slept with two other people, both were before we got together. There's no other potential father of our daughter. Imagine if she said though, like I've only slept with two other people while we were married. Yeah. And they weren't even as hot as him. So he has nothing to worry about. Exactly. Like it's, it's, it's a prank, bro. It's a prank. It's a prank. It's a prank. We were married already and actively trying for a baby. I never cheated. I never would cheat. And I don't know why he took that stupid test because I would never cheat ever, ever, ever. But it came back negative, And now he thinks he's not her dad. Oh, God. I don't know how to convince him it was a faulty test. And I'm so scared. These past few months, it's like he's become someone completely different from the man I married. He's cold and suspicious. Which I mean, like rightly so. If you have a paternity test that comes back negative, I mean, yeah. If you, like, bro, if I'm if I'm raising somebody else's baby, I might give you the cold shoulder. <laughs> yeah, you know. Hey, I'm gonna shun you for a couple weeks. He kept demanding to see my phone and wouldn't tell me why. And I showed him at first, but eventually told him I wouldn't anymore unless he explained why. He's been distant with our daughter too. He stays in his office for hours on end, and I don't know what he's doing. <sighs> I did not cheat. He accused me this morning saying he had done the test after realizing our daughter's eyes brown wouldn't naturally come from ours. Both blue. Oh, he did some uh, some like, well, like, you know, like the genetics breeding of the 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 plants, the pea, the pea oh, plants. Yeah. You know, like recessive genes. Yeah. Yeah. The capital R, little r. Mapping hey, or who something. Took, who took biology in fourth grade? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us fourth grade. What fourth graders take in biology? Hold you, on. You, 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 you learn a little biology and in science. Fourth grade. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like the little box. Bro, the, fl- the Florida schooling system was nowhere near that. <laughs> Maybe it was sixth grade. Maybe it was sixth yeah. grade. All right, class, this is biology. You put a you put a seed in the dirt and it grows. Any <laughs> questions? I'm gonna drink my beer. Don't bother me. Is that how the Florida school that was, system? That was that was our that was the our, our education, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I went to Catholic school, so maybe it was a little different. God plants a seed in you. <laughs> the end. Any questions? <laughs> no, I think it was the priest actually that planted the seed. The priest planted the seed. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. Oh, that's what they said. Um, that's what they say. <laughs> oh, God. Kidding. I'm kidding. My Catholic experience was great. Um, yeah, Sam, is there something you want to tell us? <laughs> yeah. Maybe a, a confessional booth? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll only, only to my guy, my, 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 my priest boy. You know, my dad did a documentary on priest abuse. Really? Nominated for Academy Award. I'd watch it. it uh, I actually have never watched it like cover to cover this guy I know, not watching I know. his own father's documentary i know i need to watch it i need to watch it it's, like it was it was up against you know al gore's inconvenient truth that that was in at the academy awards like he, he, al gore beat him to it and they sat next to him apparently my dad's documentary is better he should have he should have duked it out with uh old gory yeah i think gory. you know it would have gotten gory let exactly. me tell you <laughs> um and so he wanted me out of the house I didn't leave and he locked me out of our bedroom and now I'm in my daughter's room. This is terrifying. What should I do? I don't know how you convince like this is tough, dude. What do you do? I mean, literally the test says, says it. You cheated. So it's like, what else could it possibly be? So I just had a conversation with my husband. He's out of his room now and we discussed some things. I told him again, I would never cheat and started talking about a list I made of tests I want to be done. But he told me he didn't want to hear it right now. We're going to have a longer conversation tomorrow. And he said he still loves our daughter and he won't try to keep me out of the house or our room for now. I mean, I guess that's good. You can at least stay in the house. (laughs) Yeah. I asked him to hug me and he did. I'm scared that I won't be able to convince him. I just want our family to go back to normal. I asked him to hug me and he did. I'm scared that I won't be able to convince him. I just want our family to go back to normal. (laughs) How can I be a good wife and support his needs while proving my innocence? That's a toughie. That's a toughie. That is a big challenge. But, John, 
Do you know what? What? <gasps> There's an update! Oh, snap. First off, I want to thank everyone who reached out. My original post got so much attention, it was hard to do everything, but I ended up making a list of plans and tests I want to get done. My husband was understandably distrustful of me for a while, but he apologized for the way he acted, which I didn't need, and said he wouldn't try to kick me out of our home. He did say, though, that if every test came back and I cheated, then he was going to go scorched earth on my ass. You're done. Scorched earth sounds like very like fire and brimstone, which I guess is what it should mean. We just just lighten the earth on fire, but you know, <laughs> we did a few tests, blood paternity tests for him and me and our daughter. And we had an appointment with a chimerism specialist coming up, whatever that means. But that got canceled because, well, some of you guessed it. My daughter is not biologically mine. What? I don't know how this happened, but a police officer came to our house and took our statements and we're suing the hospital where I gave birth. Good. I don't know what happened to my baby and that is terrifying. That's so terrifying. You literally come home with a child that is not yours. I, I don't even know what to think. you don't realize think. it either. That's insane. And you've been also loving this child as it, taking care of it as if it's your own and yeah. then all this like, just the, it's like, you look at it and it's like, this ain't mine. Yeah. Like, it's also hard because like you like it's also weird because you pop the baby out and like, how does that mix up happen? Do you, you, that's why you mark your baby. Bring them to I, I, I truly have no idea. But like, you, you know, like in baby. movies and, and TV shows where they have that like room, room with all the little babies in it. That's I'm guessing where it happens. Yeah. I got the Not a baby up. expert. You got to mark your baby with your signature. You really do. You, can, you just got to take a little know. Sharpie and just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sign my sign my sign own baby. My baby. Yeah, bro. That's insane that that happened. I have my husband back, but my whole world is still upended. I just wish he'd never take that stupid test. I've been sleeping in my daughter's room and I'm so afraid that she's going to be taken away from me. But at the same time, I want to know where my biological daughter is and if she's okay. Yeah. I pray to God she's okay. My daughter still doesn't know the details and we've been trying to keep this quiet. The last thing we need is a big scandal. I don't know. I don't want people to know. I don't want people to look at her differently. She deserves better than that. She's such a good kid and she's not some spectacle to be gawked at. If we can find her birth family, I have no idea what we'll do. Like I did, what do you even do in that situation? The playbook has not been written. They have all those baby books where it's like what to do when you're expecting. Yeah. But what to do when you're expecting a different baby than your own baby after you got the paternity test. What do you do when you're expecting your child to be stolen and replaced? I don't know. Maybe we should write the book. What to do when your child is stolen or replaced? Well, actually, book. OP has some ideas. And they're pretty, they're Honestly, kind of I mean, we need someone with experience. All right, so this is, these, these are her ideas. I guess the best case scenario would be to get a bigger house where all our families could live together. <laughs> but I don't know if I can afford that or if, they'd even, or if they'd even go for that or if we even will be able to locate them or if I'm just crazy. I mean, that's like... I think that is maybe the best case scenario, but it, <sighs> uh, it, that would be very hard to execute. It's see, yeah, it seems like that would be hard. Like it's, it's so challenging too. Cause like probably more likely scenario is like, do you just keep, like find them? But then is it just like, do you just swap kids? Do you swap the, I mean, you've literally been treating this child as, as your own like five years for like all these years. And then it's like, I don't know. I it's, yeah, I, dude, I, I don't know either. Maybe maybe you just like tell them and become like close friends. Like the same way it's like, you know, you visit your yeah, grandparents. Family friends. Like, you know, you don't see them every day probably or your aunts and uncles. But like you go, you visit them like. This is a sitcom right here. <gasps> Switched at birth. Switched at birth. Mommy and daddy got me a little late. And they saw that my eyes they saw my eyes were different and something just wasn't straight. But then we met my other family and everything was great. That's right, because we were switched at birth. Switched at birth. That does kind of sound like a, a, a sitcom. Yeah, like, like a 90s sitcom or something. Cheryl, you stole my cardigan again. What? It fits. We're the same age, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, we both like the same boy. I was just about to say that, dude. What should we do? 
well, does he have a mother that was switched at birth to? Uh, I would watch that show. Dude. That is a show. Like, Switched at Birth that, is a show, right? I I feel like it has to be. Switched at birth. We're switched at birth, but we still love each other. I have the same sister, and you have a different brother. It was. It was. It, it's a ABC Freeform show, actually. That makes a lot of sense. That's the name. Yeah. Where, but where, like, is it what free form? Is that, does that mean That's, it's reality? It's, it's, like it's like the super cheesy, like kind of sitcom uh, drama, okay. like, Fact. like full house, but worse. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Interesting. No, sh- no shade. To, <laughs> no shade. No to shade his- to my fellow free form uh, <laughs> <laughs> people. Also no shade to ABC. No shade to ABC. You know what uh, I mean? John's original you business know, daddy. We, we, uh, you know, you- John had a show. He had a show on ABC Family. I don't know if I've. We, I don't know if that's ever come up on this. the podcast, yeah, yeah. but I did. Uh, I I was on a show called Startup You, which is like Big Brother meets Shark Tank, and we were in this like giant like Hogwarts like uh, place for seven weeks, and we were competing for investment you know from a investor. It'll be fun. We should do a screening of that show. Or, or like the pilot episode at your place, like get a projector and make it a drinking game. Like every set time we see you in the show, we have to take a shot. That's 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 a good idea. I mean, my birthday is coming up, so that would be so much fun. <laughs> that I would like be it. so much fun. I like it. Hey, we, if you want to do a John screening, we can host it. Let's make it happen. Are you actually? Are you, I'm down. Okay, I'm actually let, down. Let, let, let me know. We'll, we'll we'll talk. I think that would be hilarious. I agree. And I also. I've never seen the show, so I want to see. I'm it. I'm down. I'm down. This whole situation is crazy. I don't know anyone else who's been in a situation like this. I mean, are there like support groups for parents whose kids got mixed up? I Googled and nothing came up. Literally all I'm getting are tabloid articles from trashy magazines that slap the faces of innocent kids on the same pages as celebrity sex scandals and fiction. How do we tell our daughter? I mean, we can't tell her now. She'll tell the kids at school and it'll be everywhere. But we have to say something. I don't know what I did to deserve this. I think watch switched at birth. I mean, you got the blueprint right there. It has five seasons. So clearly they, they have come to some sort of conclusions. Can we, can we see what, um, uh, what the comments are saying? Do you even tell the daughter and just say you're adopted by, by not by choice. <laughs> Personally, you are adopted by force. Do you understand me, child? You're forcibly adopted. Um, honestly, I think my like what I would do is like basically that family becomes like the aunt and uncle and the cousin. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. all right, you were switched at birth. Like we literally spent years raising each of you respectively. So it kind of just became like we but want you to be in the family. Sucks. But it's like, I mean, I, you could probably petition to like leave them if that's the case. Oh, someone mentioned the show switched at birth in the yeah. comments. True story. Uh, he finds out the kid isn't his and leaves and she finds out the kid isn't hers either. Should have been a red flag uh, that she looked Irish, snow white skin, ginger hair, and they were Puerto Rican. If I remember correctly. <laughs> also, the family is Puerto Rican and they have this like, like white red haired daughter. That's hilarious. Do you not realize though? Like when, you know, like when the baby is in your hands, I could see the baby in the hospital because babies are just like, their faces are all like weird and fucked shit. up yeah, and yeah. like just like John loves babies. I <laughs> their, literally love their baby. Their faces are all fucked up. They're ugly pieces of wrinkled skin. I will say I, ha- I had a friend of mine who had a baby and like the first year I was like, this thing is looks crazy. <laughs> like this thing looks crazy. But now it's like the cutest like child on the planet. But when it was born, I was like, I'm sorry. Like I, I didn't say anything to them. Your but baby's ugly, dude. It, it was just. I think it was just the. I was fucked up when I came because I was uh my my head was indented because they tried to squeeze it out but it never came out so they had to be C sectioned um so I just looked like so your your head got dented because yes yeah, still a dent there's like feel right there oh shit oh shit I'm basically a cone head shit bro that's crazy so but we made it you made it through mama we made it damn that's crazy bro there's a bump you can feel the bump you can feel the bump you can feel the bump I think probably everyone has it to some degree but mine is. I have, a, I have a little bump. Decently pronounced. I have a little bump. I think I think it's it's above average at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. John's John has a a bump above average. If you know what I'm I saying. I got a I got a squeezed cranium. If you oh, catch my drift. Yeah. The head. The head. Though. The head. <laughs> um, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Goodbye. Today I effed up by accidentally FaceTiming my boss while I was deep into my wife's cheeks at 1 a.m. You know, sometimes you, you're just in those cheeks and you're like, I got 
I gotta FaceTime my boss gotta right now. Gotta show him show how him much good boss. work I'm doing on uh, this ass. Putting work in that booty. Throw away, obviously, but this happened last night. Got home from work and wife and myself decided to partake in a few glasses of wine oh, yeah. and a joint. Ooh. Everything was going swell. We got the kids to bed, then cuddled in bed to watch a movie. Mm, 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 mm. At some point, I decided to get up and take a shower, but then my wife got up and she was standing in all her glory in a little blue corset and see-through undies. And from there... It was all over. Oh, yeah. So we start going at it. And then I hear a sound next to us. And thinking back on it, it sounded like the sound of the iPhone mix when making a FaceTime call. But at the time, my high drunk ass thought it was an alarm. I forgot to shut off. So my dumb ass pauses, grabs my phone from right beside us and shuts off the alarm. Quote, unquote. <gasps> I'm on my knees in bed with the phone and hand resting on the bed in front of me. I stare at the phone for about 15 seconds. And then it hits me what I've done. But by then it was too late. A disgruntled, obviously just woken from slumber man answers the phone. And I hear, Oh, what the hell? <laughs> the fun, <laughs> the front facing camera gave my boss full view of my engorged Python in HD. The only thing I could muster <laughs> to say was, Holy shit. I'm so sorry. This was a butt dial. And I hung up. Yeah, it was. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I have absolutely no clue how this happened. Trust me, me and my wife were in shock afterwards, scrambling to figure out what the fuck just happened. I sat there for a few minutes looking at my recent calls, just staring at the screen, going through the steps of my head that had created the perfect storm of events. All I know is the fun was next to us and vaguely remember at some point before the incident, pushing it to the side to make a bit of room for some more fun. On to the update. I spoke with my boss right before the end of the workday to address a work related topic. And it looks like I'll be keeping my job. I work for a small business on a large corporate entity, so I don't need to answer to some large HR department. It was actually me that brought up the topic because I didn't want the rest of my days at the company to be filled with awkward silence with my boss. So I was up front and luckily he wasn't offended and he evenly jokingly talked about how he was going to call me back to make sure everything was still going well. <laughs> this will never be let down, but at least I think at some point we can move beyond it and return to some kind of normalcy. Boss of the year award. Boss of the year award. You can be the boss of his ass. Ooh, baby. 